The mandate of schools in British Columbia includes ensuring that all of our youth have the opportunity to obtain a high quality schooling that will assist in the development of an educated society and citizens who are thoughtful, able to learn and think critically, and who can communicate information from a broad knowledge base. Capable of making independent decisions, they are cooperative, principled and respectful of others regardless of differences, and aware of the rights and prepared to exercise the responsibilities of an individual within the family, the community, Canada, and the world. Stephen Petrina offers four succinct criteria that characterize a controversy. One, there are competing views and interests. Two, people disagree strongly about statements, assertions, or actions. Three, there is sensitivity. Four, emotions become strongly aroused. Controversial topics are often politically charged and a sign of the times in which they are being explored. Slavery, for example, was so controversial that it became a key causal factor in the American Civil War, though few today would argue in favor of it. Similarly, the benefits of smoking and smokers' rights are rarely extolled. Many controversial topics have seen positive gains over the years. For example, women's roles and rights have improved greatly through the education and brave advocacy for them, yet continued progress can be made. However, some topics remain controversial across broad periods of time. Sexual health, racism, and death are but a few. As times change, new topics arise, are championed and challenged by individuals and schools. Truth and reconciliation for Aboriginal rights and freedoms, bullying, the definition of family, Occupy Wall Street, technology, and GMOs are all current topics that tend to engage various levels of controversy. In order to fulfill the mandate of schools, engage learners, and help build an informed, democratic, pluralistic society, teachers must be trusted to handle these subjects. Teachers are highly educated members of society with easy access to resources and training to help facilitate these goals. As professionals, they can be trusted to abide by their code of ethics and the school act. Yet this in itself is a controversial topic. Teachers are regularly sanctioned for misconduct surrounding controversial issues, however these sanctions are more frequently regarding the pedagogical approach rather than the content of the lessons. We'll explore this more shortly. Furthermore, many parents prefer to address the issues at home or shield their children from them altogether. However well-intentioned these parents may be, their actions may propagate ignorant views and mindsets. Thus, it's best that parents and teachers work together to handle controversial issues. There's little reason not to trust students with controversies when presented in a responsible, unbiased, and age-appropriate manner. In fact, working through controversies with students early may help the development of values and morals that will guide them through the rest of their lives. Avoiding controversy or waiting until later may make seeing alternative worldviews more difficult as students' own views become more entrenched. Academic freedom is poorly defined in K-12 education, but is generally considered to be the freedom for teachers to teach, research and publish, and to criticize and help determine the policies of their institutions without fear of repercussions, especially at the university level. Intellectual freedom in Canada is a term to describe many of the rights guaranteed under Section 2B of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, including the right to freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression. In the United States, academic freedom in K-12 education is significantly restricted by the Morse, Tinker, and Hazelwood Supreme Court cases. These cases limit First Amendment rights to expression that have a likelihood of causing harm in the form of substantial disruption of or material interference with school activities, or actual disturbances or disorders on the school premises. This includes the advocacy of illegal drug use and the institutionally sanctioned publications. Canadian case law is much more limited than American jurisprudence, but many scholars agree that when challenged, Canadian courts will follow American precedent. However, a recent BC Court of Appeal decision in BCTF v BCPC has been described as a landmark victory for academic freedom and freedom of expression for teachers that builds on the 2005 Monroe decision affirming the rights of teachers to post and distribute political messages critical of the government. In light of these decisions, and Madam Justice Levine's inference that the measure of the limits of teachers' freedom of expression lies in the direct evidence or fair inferences of interference in the educational process and some harm to students' educational experiences, it would appear that Canadian educators currently enjoy a great deal of academic freedom. Regardless of the legal extent of academic freedoms, best practices suggest that there are steps that should be taken in preparing for teaching controversial issues in order to minimize potential negative impact. Officially, all resources must be provincially recommended learning resources or board approved. However, this is not always practicable, particularly when teaching current events relevant to lives of students. In such cases, resources should always be previewed for the appropriateness of content and relevance to learning outcomes. 
Silas and others suggest clearly communicating with parents and administration and linking to official curricular goals before embarking on controversial topics. Silas also recommends having strong understanding of the community's values as to predict which topics may be seen as more controversial than others. Many approaches to teaching controversial issues exist in the literature and all identify preparation and structures necessary for success. In the preparation phase, learning outcomes are identified and teaching strategies and resources are selected. This would also be the time to inform administration and parents if it has not already been done. Some authors identify the value of collaborative planning too. Consultation with school counselors may also be an important step in the planning process. The structure of teaching controversial issues varies across the literature, but many of these approaches include setting clear ground rules and norms for discussion in a safe and open environment. Teachers are encouraged to be mindful of body language and behavior as an indication of what's not being said, and carefully moderate incivilities, over-attachment to ideas, and negative thinking. Different methods value facts and feelings differently, but many suggest ample material from multiple perspectives and significant time for reflection and closure. One strategy that is recurrently discussed is the use of talking circles that are facilitated by a skilled teacher. This strategy provides opportunity for all opinions to be heard in an open and safe environment and encourages thoughtful listening to others. Teaching controversial topics is complex, and the best methods for doing so are somewhat controversial themselves. However, it's difficult to envision a class or a school meeting its mandate to develop thoughtful, critically thinking citizens without exposing students to controversial topics and teaching them how to navigate them and develop their own complex thinking about them. Therefore, teachers as professionals and students as learners must both be trusted and encouraged to invoke their academic and intellectual freedoms and go there. With careful planning, the use of appropriate resources, collaboration, communication and respect, learning through controversial topics can be safe and significant.